you would just move upon them, Lord God, and that you would help them out, God, and give them favor, Lord, wherever they go, God. Give this congregation favor, Father, favor in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And, and what the Lord can give me for just a few minutes. But um, receiving the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues is more or less a, a refresher course. That's what we're gonna. That's what we're gonna do tonight. Is is just do a refresher course because everybody in here, either you've got the Holy Ghost or you've been in church so long that you know how to receive the Holy Ghost if you don't have it. But we're just gonna do this refresher course. That's what I keep hearing in my spirit. It's just a refresher course. We're gonna teach you just a little something tonight. But the the. The words that the Lord just began to put in my spirit today was just overwhelming. I, I'm overwhelmed. I just hardly, hardly can stand up here to tell you the truth because I'm so overwhelmed with what he's doing in us. It's not just me. It's not just me because when I when I go home and I'm in my prayer closet and, and I'm getting scripture and word from the Lord, then one of y'all will come up and, and, and you've got the scripture that the Lord had given me the week before. That's called unity. If I'm not mistaken, that's called unity. Am I right? Unity. Unity in the spirit. But we're going to look at some steps of helping someone else, somebody that don't know how to receive the Holy Ghost, that don't know anything about the Holy Ghost, that don't, that uh, hasn't grown up around it, that are around Him, that has not grown, grown up, I should say, around the church. And they're coming. I keep seeing them. And I know it's going to happen. I know it without a shadow of a doubt. I knew it. I knew it in Decula Church of God, uh, 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 Joyce, when, when the Lord spoke to us and said that people were coming. They, he spoke to my daddy before he passed away and said people were coming, that they were going to be drawn from off of the road. I can see that in this place even, that they're going to be just drawn from off of the road because when the fire, when the fire comes, when the Holy Ghost fire breaks out, People's going to know it, and they're going to want a, a piece of it. They're going to want to know what's going on. What's going on? I need to get up there. About like this this weekend when in those services, I only got to go to one, but I'm going to tell you, whew, that's all I can say about that one. <laughs> it, it was good. But uh, we're going to give them the Word of God. That's the first thing. That's the first thing that we have to give them because they've got to know the Bible. They've got to know what the, what the Bible says about the Holy Ghost and, and that he is not, that he is a person and that he is not an it. How many, how many, and I am just as guilty as anybody else. How many times have you said when you're talking about the Holy Ghost, you talk about it, the Holy Ghost, it, the Holy Ghost, let me tell you, he is not an it. He is not an it. He is a person. He is a divine influence in our lives. In our life, sent by Jesus Christ himself. Because he said, when I go away, if I go away, I'm going to send the comforter to you. When I go away, I said, yeah. when I go away. He is a person with emotions. He has emotions. Do you know how I know that the Holy Ghost has emotions, brother? Because the Bible says, do not grieve the spirit. Do not grieve the Spirit. He didn't say, don't make the Spirit angry. He said, do not grieve the Spirit. And that means to, grieve means to lament or make sad, make it unhappy or sorrowful. Now, you can't make an it sorrowful, can you? So the Holy Ghost is a he. Ephesians 4 and 30 says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Teach people to obey the Holy Ghost. That's what we have to do. We are seasoned, for the most part, every one of us, except maybe the little children. We are seasoned in our relationship with God. For the most part, every one of us are. So it is up to 
not just the preachers, the teachers, the pastors, the evangelists, or anybody else. It's not just up to them to teach, but it's also up to you. When, they, when somebody crosses your path, it is up to you to also teach them to obey the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of God is, it, it, the Holy Spirit is God. He is deity. Absolutely. He is yeah. the the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. Amen. And he's also co-equal with God the Father and God the Son. Manifested in three persons. Yes. Right. Manifested, but one, one God. One Lord. One, Lord. one God. Because John first John 5 and 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three, they're one. They're one. Yes. Yes. Acts 2 and 38 tells us, I'm just going to go over quite a few scriptures tonight because this is what the Holy Ghost gave me today. But uh, the, uh, Acts 2, 38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. All right. yes, Lord. And you shall receive the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now we don't have to beg, and you need to, to remember to tell people when they're when they're seeking for the Holy Ghost, you do not have to beg for the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says right here that it is a gift. It is a gift from God. The Holy Spirit, all we have to do is ask the Father for the gift of the Spirit. And yes. He will give us, and He will give it to us in great measure. Great measure. He will come down in such a way. And he walks with us. He talks with us. He, he, he share, we can share with him. Did you realize that we can share with him? That's what we must tell people. Because we've got to make people hungry. Amen. We've got to make them Amen. hungry. If we don't make them hungry, I'm going to tell you, they're not going to come to the table. Okay. If you're not hungry... Are you going to go to the table? Do you go to the refrigerator? Do you go to the cabinet or the pantry? Do you go there to get something to eat if you're not hungry? For the most part, no. If you have a habit, yeah. But for the most part, no. That's right. So we've got to talk it and walk it. Yes. And, and make people hunger for it. Amen. For him. Amen. Not it. Amen. For him. Amen. For him. Luke 11 and 9 and 9 and 10 says, And I say unto you, ask, yes. and it shall be given you. <clears throat> Seek, and you shall find. Yes. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. Yes. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You got to ask, so that you will receive. That's all you tell. That's what you tell somebody. You just ask. Ask for the Holy Ghost. Ask for the Holy Ghost to come in. Yeah. To dwell within you. Now I'm teaching you something tonight. These are things that the Lord said today that, that we've got to remember. We've got to tell people. We've got to refresh ourselves. This course tonight. We've got to refresh ourselves. And, and remember that when they start coming in. Because I want to tell you. I keep seeing them. I'm standing here and I'm looking at you, but I keep seeing people walking through the door. I keep seeing people coming up the driveways. I keep seeing that happen. And I know without a doubt that the Lord is saying we must prepare ourselves and we've got to be prepared. Yes. We have to prepare. Yes. Not only, not only knowing how to help people when they come up to receive the power of the Holy Ghost, but also salvation. When they need healing, we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. Yes. We need to be on guard when, when uh, people come through. Because you never know. You never know. You need to be ready. Be on guard and be ready. Yes, uh, verse 13 in, in uh, Luke 11 says, at, in uh, the last part of it says, How much more? I love this one. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Yes, yes. It's for the asking. Yes, it is. He is for the asking. Lord, help me. He is for the asking. 
Ask and receive, seek and find, knock, and it will be opened. Acts 2 and 4 tells us, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit yes. gave them utterance. Yes. Preachers, teachers, evangelists, pastors, we got to get ready because there's a mighty move. The Lord, in, in, my, in my spirit, I could just hear a mighty move. I could hear it again, a mighty move of God. Just like, just like the first of last year when I heard the army hitting the ground, hitting the ground running. It's like a mighty move. It's like a wind. The wind started blowing this afternoon. And it was like, it was like when I was standing out there, I was saying, oh God, is this the way it is? Is this the way it's going to be? In the churches, it's going to be so, so much and so great and so powerful that we can't even hardly stand in it. I couldn't even hardly keep my bus on the road this afternoon. And I was thinking the whole time, God, you know, this is the way your power is. When the power of the Holy Ghost sweeps through the place, I'm going to tell you, you better be ready. You're going to get knocked down. Yes. You're going to get knocked down. And, and it's okay if you get knocked down because you just let that praise the Lord do. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Holy God. I'm just excited. Can y'all tell? That's right. We got something to be excited about. Yes, Lord. yes. But, you know, just over and over, I could hear the Spirit say, just, just teach, 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 because the people need to know. We need to know. We need to be reminded, in other words. We need to be reminded. The Scriptures and the power of the Holy Ghost that is on us. You know why? The enemy has caused people to believe a lie. That if they yield to the spirit and they speak in tongues that they may be blaspheming that they're they're just not sure you know i've heard i've heard a couple of people say well i, I, I just I, I can't speak out what what comes to my mind i can't speak out what's what's coming into my mouth and what i feel in my heart i can't speak that out because you know it might be blaspheming no no not when you tell them tell them i can't i can't tell you enough to tell them who, whoever it is, whenever they come to these altars, tell them that that is not blaspheming when you want and you are desire the Holy Ghost. When you desire to speak in the unknown tongue. Because I'm going to tell you, it's like it's like the Lord, uh, you know, that's what I was afraid of. I, I was brought up in, in the Church of God for the most part. First Baptist Church, then, then the uh, Church of God. Pentecostal. Strict, not as strict as it was with mom. Strict, and it was it was you know uh, you do this you do that you do, uh, don't want to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Don't want to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. So I was afraid. I was scared. I had worry in my heart, in my spirit, and I know that lots of people do because I'm not the only one out there. I'm not the only one. But though I would, I would say, I, I can't, I can't, I can't say, I can't speak what's coming to my mind. I can't, you know, I, I can't make those syllables come out of my mouth because that's going to be blasphemy. And the Lord spoke to me one day in my house, and He says, He said, Martha, He says it's like a baby. It's like a little toddler when they start to talk. He said, just remember that. It's like a little baby. They will form syllables. They'll listen to you. Sometimes they'll listen to you. They'll hear the words and they'll form those syllables in their mouth. Now it's okay. This is okay, right, Pastor? Because this is what the Lord gave me. And he says, he says, it's just like that baby. The more that they speak, the more that they try to form those syllables and those words in, in their mouth, the more and more they're going to learn. And that's what happened to me. I remember falling flat down on my face in my hall. I was 21 years old and I said, God, if that's it, I will speak whatever you give to me from here on out. And I began to speak and I began to speak and it was more and more and more. And the more that I did, the more that I wanted to because I had that, I had that communion with the Father. I had that communion with the Holy Ghost. And that's what it is. Don't, don't let anybody tell you that it's that it's not um, that that it's just going to fall on you and you're just going to start speaking out. Because for me, now it might for some, it might take that for some because they've had such a hard life and they just you know get saved, be filled with the Holy Ghost, and start speaking in tongues and fluent. 
but not everybody. And the Lord is telling me to tell you this so that you will know, so that you will remember. I, I pray that God puts this in your spirit so strong that you will remember because I know without a doubt that somebody is going to come and they're going to be talking to you on this very subject. Or the Lord wouldn't have given it to me like this. He wouldn't have said, let's talk about this tonight. He wouldn't have said it. But the Bible says that, that Satan is the liar and the father of lies. So don't let him tell the people. Don't let him lie to you about blasphemy in the Holy Ghost. Because when your heart is right and you are, you are wanting the, the Holy Ghost and you're wanting to live for the Lord and you're wanting to do the right thing for the Lord, that's not blasphemy. And this is serious, people. It's really serious. I'm, I'm telling you, it, it, it was so serious with me today. It was just like, you know, took your breath away at times. And let me tell you why it's so serious. The Lord took me to Acts 1 and 8. And it tells us, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. When the Holy Ghost comes on us, when we begin to have that power, move in that power, walk in that power, walk in the power of the Spirit of God, you will be witnesses, witnesses in the world. You will see somebody and want to tell them about Jesus. You'll, be, you'll, you'll see somebody or somebody will call you up and, and you'll want to pray for them. You know, you'll want to do things that the Lord wants you to do. You want to hear the voice of the Lord speak to you. And do you think, this is why it's so serious, do you think for one minute that Satan wants you, that the enemy wants you to witness? No. No. He doesn't want you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He doesn't want people in this church to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He wants everybody quiet. He don't want nobody to say anything. Because we might get excited and we might tell them about Jesus. We might tell them about Jesus. Because when you witness then or and, and, and testify, you're made an overcomer. And the Bible says that we are made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. The word of our testimony. We are made overcomers. Did you get that? Did you get that? That's why the enemy does not want you to have, don't want you talking about the Holy Ghost, don't want you to have the Holy Ghost, don't want you moving in the power of the Holy Ghost because he don't want you witnessing. He don't want you to tell anybody. And then... In John 14 and 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now let me get that last part in there real quick before I forget it. Whatsoever I have said unto you. If you're not open in the word of God, he ain't saying nothing to you. It's just as simple as that. We got to tell people that. If you're not open in the word of God, he's not saying anything to you. But he, it says that he will teach you everything you need to know. Everything you need to know. It says in Luke 12 and 11 and Mark 10 and 19 and in, I mean Matthew 10 and 19 and Mark 13 and 11. It also says that when you're brought before the authorities, don't worry. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Why? Because the power of the Holy Ghost that's in you is going to speak for you as long as you are praying and you're doing the will of the Father. You're doing what he says to do. He will bring it to your remembrance. Jesus has said it. And he's he said it in his word. And if we read his word. Then we're going, we're going to have it in our spirit. And the spirit of God is going to bring it out of us. He will bring it out of us. Three things that the Lord gave me today to remember. He said these are things that, that we must tell people. 
that we must say to them when they're seeking the Holy Ghost. And Pastor, I know without doubt that that if, if the Lord has given us these things that he's about to send people. Now, I, I'm, just, I, I'm just that way. I just believe. I just believe, and if I just believe, then I know that I'm going to receive. That it's going to happen. It's going to take place. Why would he give us this and say, tell the people. Tell the people. And he's talking to all of us, not just me to tell you. He's talking to all of us to tell the people. That's what he's saying. The Holy Ghost said that we must, we must, we must tell the people. Number one, to be diligent to pray and seek the face of God and invite, listen to this one, listen to this one, and to invite the Holy Ghost to come sit down and talk with me. Come sit down and teach me. So I have begun the last couple of months, I have begun to, in my prayer time, I, be, I, be, I begin to imagine or see in my spirit, not imagine, a see in my spirit that when I go to my prayer place, I say, welcome, Holy Spirit. And when I welcome the Holy Spirit, I can just see that he's sitting right there. And then the word, it seems like, Pastor, and I know that you know, I, I know that, that all, of, all of you probably knows, but it, it's, just, it's just to me has become... It has become more real. I should say it's become more real to me that this is really true, that this is really happening because I can see it in the Spirit when the Holy Ghost just begins to, to open up the Word to me and begins to show me the words. Yeah, every one of us, every one of us. Now being nonchalant in your prayer life, that ain't going to get you anywhere because the Holy Spirit wants to be there when you're worshiping God and when you're praising God, he's not, he's not, he's not really wanting to, I, I can't say be there because he's there. He's there. Yes, he is. We're not going to say that. We're going to be, we're, we're just not going to say that. I'm just not going to give place. But the Holy Spirit is the only one, the only one that can lead us to the Father. That's he's right. the only one. The only one. Because the Bible says when Jesus walked this earth, when he was ready to go back to the Father, and I quoted it a while ago, he said, when I go away, I'm going to send the Comforter. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to sit at the right hand of the throne of God. And the Lord's been dealing with me lately also about uh, us uh, uh, praising and being raised up to him, not bringing him down to us because we don't want him off of his throne. We want to be lifted up. Because he says, if I be lifted up, then I'll draw all men unto me. Right? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I see the heads shaking. Yes. But yield to the, the power of the Holy Ghost is the second thing. Yielding to the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't be afraid. As I said before, don't be afraid and tell people not to be afraid of blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Because if they truly are worshiping and they truly want the power of the Holy Ghost, they will receive it. They, it won't be. It won't be. That's what the enemy tries to get our focus on is blaspheming. Oh, you're going to mess up here. You don't want to do that. Don't you speak that out. You know, that's blaspheming. No, you don't, you don't want to do that. But that's, that's the way that the enemy will come at us. And try to break us down, you know. And not just not just uh, people that don't have the Holy Ghost, but people that that have had the Holy Ghost for years. The devil will come and he will try and try and try his best. Sometimes try to tell you, no, you don't. You're just you're just making that up. That's just that's just something that's made up. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. And number three, to speak out. He said just to speak it out. Give it out. When a word comes to your mind, tell them. When that word, when that syllable comes to your mind, give it out. Give it out. Even if it does sound like a baby. Even if it does sound like baby talk. Because that's, or I, I put it jibber jabber, but I wasn't going to say that, but that's pretty cute up here. Remember that it's like a toddler. Like a little baby. 
when they first start. That's the main thing I want you to get in your spirit tonight. Get in your, get in your, in, in inside of you so that when this happens, because it's happening, it's coming. Somebody is going to ask you, and you're going to need to know. You're going to need to know. Be diligent in prayer. Yield to the Holy Spirit and speak it out. Those are the three things. Yield to the Holy Spirit. You know, the, the, uh, there was some ladies in Cumming, Georgia. It was my mother's sister. Asked me years ago, years and years ago, to come speak to, the, uh, to their group of ladies about the Holy Ghost. Do you remember me telling you that, Pastor? It's been years ago. I, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know how I was going to speak to Baptist women because I was a Baptist or is a Baptist or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's still in me. I still got a lot of that in me. And 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 as the Pastor says, Baptocostal now. Some people say that ain't such a word, but that's a good word for me because that's what I am. I was raised Baptist and, and went into the Pentecostal. But I didn't know what to say. And when the Holy Ghost began to speak to me, then he said, this is what I want you to tell them. He says, you wrap you up a really pretty box, a gift box. I made it big. I didn't, I didn't make a little bitty one. I made a big white gift box. And I put a really, really, really large, nice bow on it. Or I think Brenda done it for me. I can't do those. But I had that and I took it with me and I set it down. And this is what you tell people. You can have the Holy Ghost. You receive the Holy Ghost. The Bible says you receive the Holy Ghost when you get saved. You receive the Holy Ghost. But it says also that, that he shall be with you and he shall be in you. And so I told him, I said, you know, I'm so glad that the Holy Ghost is with me. But you know, when I take that gift, that gift that the Father gave me, that said, the Father said was mine, just for the asking, just for the asking. He said, just to ask, and you would receive the Holy Ghost. And, and I, I told him, I said, so when I take that gift and I bring it to myself, it, he comes in and then that's when the tongues begin to, to come out and, and, and they were just they were amazed they hadn't looked at it that way they didn't realize it that it was like that and see sometimes we just have to tell people we have to give them a little illustration and let them know he's a gift and he's for the asking he's for the asking don't grieve the Holy Spirit the Bible says, don't grieve. I read that scripture at the beginning. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Grieve, it didn't say anger. It didn't say don't make him angry. Because anger has to do with resentment. And the Holy Ghost has nothing to do with resentment. He is, it says, don't grieve him. Don't grieve him. Don't make him sad. Don't make him unhappy. Don't make him sorrowful. He's your friend. He is your friend. And he's the comforter that Jesus sent to walk with us, to walk beside us, and to walk in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I like that. I like that. He's the comforter that Jesus sent to walk with us, beside us, and in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bobby, if you want to come to the piano. Remember that the the Spirit of the Lord said, or the Holy Spirit said, this is a refresher course. A refresher course. We need to know these things. and We need to know these scriptures so that when we're asked, we can know and we can say. You know, uh, years ago, years ago, the Lord laid on my heart to, to write down all of the, um, this is when I was young. This, this has been in my Bibles. So I've, I've carried it from Bible to Bible. But he, he had me to write down the ABCs of salvation because I needed to know those. And I realized 
that when and, and you know when somebody comes to, to be saved and I'm the one that's there and I'm leading them, you're going to find that I'm going to get my Bible because I want to show them. The Lord said, I need for you to show them the word. I need you to show it to them. And see, I've seen lots of preachers, lots of pastors, lots of lots of ministers get the word out and they're they're showing it to the people. And I and I know, I know without a doubt that when we show it to them, that it'll just they can they can get it in. They retain it better. We've got to use the word God. You know, that's been my that's been my thing for years, years, years. That's what I'm all about is the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. I'm not the best at remembering it, but the Holy Ghost remembers and He brings it back to my remembrance when I need it. Hallelujah. He's good. He's good. And why would He remind us to prepare? Because Jesus is coming soon. And you know, in, in the Spirit, as the pastor said on Sunday that I was in the Spirit, I was in the Spirit because I didn't know what I was saying up here. But I do remember saying, and I remember seeing it on tape, that I said, Jesus is coming. And I still feel that. I still know that. I know that without a doubt. Jesus is coming soon. And we must be ready. We must be prepared. We must have our hearts ready and waiting on Him and know His Word and know how to lead somebody to Christ and know how to lead them to, uh, to receive the power of the Holy Ghost.